buy one welcome to mcn it's one of the million dollar questions in motorcycling what is the ultimate adventure bike so we've come to sweet lamb in wales which is a huge off-road nirvana to evaluate what i regard as some of the key motorcycles in the market what we've seen over the years is adventure bikes essentially just got bigger and bigger and bigger you know the the BMW R1200 went to the 1250. The KTM's gone from a 1190 to a 1290. And we've even got the Ducati V4, a 170 brake horsepower off-road bike, essentially. So I've been lucky enough to do quite a lot of riding all around Europe, all around the UK. And I've kind of really found that lighter is better, smaller bikes, I find are more usable, you can go better places, your confidence level increases. So in about 2019, the market changed quite considerably. Yamaha bought out, finally released their long-awaited Tenere 700, and that was shortly followed by the KTM 790 Adventure R. So these were bikes still reasonably heavy, around 200 kilos, but they were still twin cylinders, but considerably more off-road focused and that's where that sort of market came like i say i've been mcn for nearly 20 years now and i've been lucky enough to ride some incredible places and, and pretty much ride a lot of these motorbikes um, last year i had a ktm 890 adventure r which had some fantastic times on did a great trip up in northumberland on the uh, on the tet the trans euro trail um, but one of the things it really came to i really just thought this is a little bit too big. You know, there was a couple of times I was riding with, I was riding with my brother, but there was a couple of times where we had problems. And even with a couple of you, you got into tricky situations and it's suddenly a big, big motorbike to pull up, to pick up. So we have basically assembled what I regard as key motorcycles in the market. They're all in that middle weight, lightweight category. But there is actually a bit of a catch to this test. So unlike most tests we do at MCN, we evaluate motorcycles, we pick a winner. On this occasion, it's something I really want to do more of this type of riding. So the bike that wins out of these five, I'm actually going to buy and turn into my own adventure bike. And of course, that does make this test very subjective. There's certain criteria of the type of rider I am, the type of riding I want to do. But over the next 20 minutes, we're gonna try and explain what I actually want from a motorcycle, put these bikes, give them a genuine test, real world test, and pick a winner. Right, so what bikes have we chosen? The Honda CRF 300 Rally, AJP PR7, Yamaha Tenere 700, KTM 690 Enduro R, and the Aprilia Touareg. There are actually a couple of bikes that I very much considered including on this test, which are the Honda CR450L and the KTM 890 Adventure R. The 890 Adventure R, I love that bike, but we didn't include it mainly because of the price. It's over 12 and a half thousand pounds of standard. And the CRF 450L, great motorbike, but felt it was just a little bit too compromised in terms of service intervals. And also it's an expensive motorbike to start with. Right, so Yamaha Tenere 700. First up, it's an awesome looking motorbike. Um, I think the styling really captured everyone's imagination when they launched it in 2019 black colours, it, you know, it really does look the part. Um, I've done quite a bit on this bike. I was on the launch of it in Spain when it first came out. Uh, I've done a couple of trips to Wales and I did a trip last year up to Northumberland. So it's a bike I know reasonably well. 
Um, it's a bike I've done a fair bit of off-road on and a fair bit of road mileage on it. Um, the highlight for me is the engine. It's, um, it's the MT-07 engine. It's been used across multiple platforms from Yamaha, but it is it really is sweet as a nut. It's, uh, it's not a particularly complicated engine, not a particularly high-tech engine, but it's got a lot of character. It's a really engaging ride, and it's got a really nice throttle response. So a little bit jerky right off the bottom, but as soon as you're actually on the power, as soon as you've got it dialed in, you just feel like you've got, got the power in your hand, which is a, you know, a really nice feeling for off-road, you know, to sort of finish off the turn with a little slide and stuff like that. So really is, is the peach. Another thing I really like about the bike is that it's simple. It's not, they haven't overcomplicated it. So many bikes now are, you know, loaded with electronics. Some manufacturers do the electronics very, very well, others less so. But Yamaha have basically kept this bike simple. So you've got no traction control. You've got no quick shifter. It's very, very basic, if you like, but it's better as a result. You've simply got one button on the dash, which enables you to turn the ABS off on the back. So you still got it on the front, but the back means you can just lock the back up should you require to. And it also um, dials in, that's basically your, your off-road setting. But there's no different mapping and no different fueling. You get what you get, whether you're on the road or off-road. But like I say, that throttle connection is really good. Things I'm not so keen about the bike is it's tall. It's very tall, you know, I'm not that tall, you know, five foot nine on a good day. So, you know, it's, it's, it's high, I'm on tiptoes on the bike, which is fine if everything's going well and you're up on the pegs and riding away. If it gets difficult, it can be a little bit harder. But also the other issue is, is the physical height of the tank as well. You know, I mean, okay, I'm sli slightly down on the bike, but you know, it, it's right up, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of chest height and, the center of gravity is high on this bike. There's no doubt about it. The engine is quite tall. And then you've got the fuel tank, 18 litre fuel tank sitting on top and you have got quite a lot of weight and you do notice that weight. A, if you have, ever have to pick it up, but you do also notice it at slow speed, maneuvering it around. And that sort of has been kind of borne out because Yamaha have recently announced the uh, World Rally Edition, which has got twin tank and is seating that fuel lower on the bike to essentially improve the center of gravity. But all in all, it's a great motorbike. It's got a fantastic following for good reason. Um, but there are a few things for me that does really sort of compromise it, especially off-road. Right, KTM 690 Enduro R. It is a uh, yeah, single cylinder, 70 horsepower, got traction control off, Got in power map two. It's a stiff bike. There's no doubt about it. It feels like an enduro bike. It's hard, the seat's hard. Lots of room to move up front and back. We're on 50-50 tires, which isn't really the best for this sort of riding, but we will give it a go. The power's nice, the power's strong. It's dead smooth. It's got the twin, um, twin balancer shaft on this bike. See where we're at here. So yeah, so we're at Sweet Lamb here, which is uh, where um, the Sweet Lamb off-road adventure experience, and uh, it really is an amazing place to ride. Six and a half thousand acres, over 30 miles of roads. I've been lucky enough to ride here over the years for probably about seven or eight years now. I've done a few events here. And I, I swear to God, I haven't been this. Every time I come, I discover a new place. This is one of them. Right. So yeah, so quite high geared to be fair. You know, I'm in second straight away and it's sort of quite chuggy. Nice and smooth suspensions plush, just sort of soaks this stuff up. Really does. It's just pretty easy. Really nice balance rear fuel tanks on the KTM. So it doesn't feel, yeah, it just feels a pretty even split weight wise. I think it looks wise, it looks a little bit um, sort of front heavy, sorry, back heavy, but in the grand scheme of things, right. bit of gully work, 690 Enduro R. <laughs> I 
quite nice up here. Going to go first. It's quite gnarly this because it's a uh, rocky, it's loose, and no real straight line. Bit of a step there. Another dab. Call myself a trials rider. There we go. Up through the hard bit. But yeah, the KTM really does fly. I mean, it it just puts a smile on your face. So while this bike is an absolute weapon off-road, it is actually compromised as an adventure bike. Personally, for me, I will need to be doing road mileage to get to where I'm going to be able to do any sort of meaningful off-road. So that is actually a consideration. The areas where it really struggles is it's, it's literally got no screen. So there is zero wind protection. So the moment you're on a fast A road or a dual carriage rate or a motorway, Although the air is actually quite clean air, there's not particularly bad buffeting around the helmet, but the wind is hitting you straight in the chest. And anything sort of motorway speeds, you, you almost get the sensation that you're actually, actually having to hold on to stay on the bike because of the, the force of the wind on your chest. So that's a real issue. The other one is the seat. It's, you know, like I said at the start of the video, you know, it's a, it, it's called an enduro and it feels like an enduro bike. The seat is narrow, the seat's hard, the seat's high, and it is very, very uncomfortable. Um, I mean, any sort, of, any sort of mileage, you know, you, you just wouldn't want to be sat down on the thing for very long. So that is obviously a, a real factor for the type of bike I'm looking for, which, you know, I, I do need to do road miles even though when you get to the dirt and you get off road, it's an absolute, you know, absolute pleasure to ride. AJP PR7. So this is actually a 2018 spec bike. I've ridden one of these before, back in 2018. And the reason is we've got a 2018 bike is because we spoke to AJP UK. They were very keen and wanted to be involved on this test. But unfortunately, because of the demand for the bike, they didn't actually have any of the 2022 spec bikes. So we were kindly loaned this bike by Ben, one of the instructors at the um, Sweet Lamb Adventure Experience. So, because I really wanted it on the test, because like I said, I've ridden one before and found it a really, I think it's an important bike in the market, I really do. So the reason I like it is because of the spec of the bike. They've clearly a lot of thought has gone into it. Rear fuel tank, so really helps the weight balance of the bike. It also makes it very low here. So you feel like you've got lots of room, lots of room to move around. The seat is high, the seat height is high, but the suspension is quite plush. The seat is plush and quite soft. So as a result, the bike's narrow. So there's no real issue of getting your feet on the ground. The engine actually comes from S an SWM. It's a 600cc single. It's a very old school engine, but that shouldn't be go against it because it really works well within the package with the whole balance of the bike, the way that you can deliver the power. It's just, it's soft, it's manageable, but when you crack it, you've got a lot of grunt and a lot of feel from it where you know what's going on in terms of traction. Components wise, it's good spec as well. It's sack suspension, um, sack rear shock, but it's good quality stuff. We were hitting some pretty big jumps earlier on today and really just landing nicely, no bottoming out, really good. The other thing as well, which I really like, is it's got a Samsung Galaxy tablet built into the dash. This is all standard, by the way. So absolutely fantastic for all your navigation. You know, you can get your GPX routes into there, navigate from there, really, really nice touch. So I guess the question is, what are its faults? And there aren't many, to be perfectly honest. There were a few issues with the earlier bikes with some uh, electronics issues, cold start issues, a bit hesitant off the bottom in terms of throttle. But these, as far as I know, have very much been addressed with the 2022 bike. I haven't ridden the 2022 bike, so I can't actually vouch for that. But all, every, all the feedback I'm getting is that that is the case. So as an adventure bike that's got good off-road credentials, but is also can hold its own on the road, it's a very, very interesting proposition. Honda CRF 300 Rally. So the 250 Rally was introduced in 2017. They bought out the 300 version in 2021. Uh, it's only actually a 286 CC single cylinder, uh, but it, that extra bit of power definitely makes a difference over the outgoing model. 
First of all, I think it looks great. You know, it really does tick all the boxes, you know, proper rally styling, fantastic screen, definite got that real sort of rally look, rally feel. Um, on the trails, it is without doubt the easiest bike to ride here. It's user friendly, seats relatively low, very soft power, lots of feel from the suspension. It is unintimidating and for, you know, if you're doing sort of muddy green lanes and things like that, then it would be, you'd be very happy on the bike. It's got a really big follow in this bike and it's quite clear to see why because it sort of ticks the boxes for so many people in having something that is really usable, nice, friendly bike to ride. And it's also clearly by far the cheapest bike in the test. 6,000 and just over 6,000 pounds, which is, you know, 3,000 pounds cheaper than anything else on the test. So that's significant, you know, 6,000 pounds, 3,000 pounds would get you on quite a few trips and adventures if you wanted to look at it like that. So while it is user friendly and a nice place to be, well equipped, etc., for me, I just find it a little bit too soft, a little bit too underpowered. Suspension is a little bit soft, you know, ultimately, like I've said, it's £3,000 less than some of the other bikes. It's clearly is built to a budget, like every motorbike is built to a budget, but this is built to a budget and there are sort of signs of that. It weighs about as much as a KTM, but where this is, you know, a claimed 27 horsepower, the KTM's putting out, you know, over 70 horsepower, so you can kind of get an idea and a difference in power. Saying that, on the road, it's good. You know, you can comfortably sit at 70 miles an hour with good wind protection, no problem at all. My kind of concern is when I'm sort of loaded up with camping gear and if I am having to do some sort of longer miles, I just feel like I'm going to be very much at the sort of upper end of its sort of capability. And like I said, in terms of its sort of off-road, true off-road credentials, if you want to start going a bit quicker, if you want to start maybe entering, you know, a Baja event or, or a, you know, a, a road book rally, you know, something like that, I do just think it's a little bit out of its league. So it's a new bike for me. I've only been on it for one, for one full day, but there's a lot to celebrate. There's a really are a lot of good points. First up is the dash. It's got a beautiful little TFT dash and it's got quite a lot of electronic settings. So you've got your different fuel mappings, which is, you know, a step up from something like the Aprilia should you want to go down that road of having additional electronics. Another real strong point for me is the fact that it's very narrow. The seat height is quite low relatively for this kind of motorbike, but the seat itself is narrow right where you want it to be narrow, right directly above the foot pegs. And that just enables someone my height just to get better purchase with your feet on the, on the ground. Another thing, it's a small thing, but could make a big difference if you get stuck somewhere. A lot of these bikes have sort of style over substance and they don't actually have anywhere to hold on to. This has got some really great handholds built into the subframe. Really could be useful if you ever got stuck. So all in all, it's a very accomplished motorbike and a great addition to the market. Genuinely has exceeded my expectations. Right, it's decision time. So firstly, there are no bad motorbikes here. We have had great time riding them here at Sweet Lamb and some fantastic riding, all sorts of terrain. So the process I've gone through to decide which one is the winner is obviously very subjective, as I've already said. You know, this is based on what I want from a motorbike, what I want from an adventure bike, which is essentially something that's very capable off-road, that can handle road mileage and is also, you know, engaging and a lot of fun. So on the basis of my desire to sort of do quite some technical off-road, I've ruled out the two bikes here, the Tenere and the Touareg. Both excellent bikes, don't get me wrong, and so much fun on the faster sort of fire track stuff. But for me, my size, the fact that I will potentially do some sort of solo riding, it, they're just a little bit too big. You know, they're both over 200 kilos, and that's why I've ruled those out. The Honda, a really interesting proposition. It's a lovely thing, it's very friendly, but for me it's just a little bit underpowered and a little bit soft because I am going to have to do some road mileage and I also, you know, 
may be doing some competitions some rallies and things and it's just a little bit yeah a little bit outgunned so it's come down to the ktm and the ajp and i can tell you it's been a really really difficult decision the ajp is kind of everything you want from an adventure bike it's all there it's got wind protection it's got a great motor single cylinder lightweight it's all got it going on the reason I've decided against the AJP, however, is that I still have some slight question marks over sort of long-term reliability of the bike. I know people that have got the, the AJP and they, it seems that they're always kind of having to have a little tinker, always kind of having to resolve sort of small issues. So the other problem with the AJP for me is the motor. Even though it's a proven engine, single cylinder, it's got a nice feel, it is quite old school and for me it's just not as exciting as the KTM. Right, so the bike I'm going to buy is the KTM 690 Enduro R. Off-road it has just blown me away. The way it performs, the balance of the bike, the way it delivers its power, quick shifter up and down, it's just an absolute weapon and the moment I get on it I can't keep the smile off my face. So that is the reason why I want the bike, but I'm acutely aware that it is not perfect as it is. You know, I've already addressed the fact that it's not very comfortable and there is no wind protection. So now the challenge for me is to establish a way to get some sort of screen on the bike and also somewhere where I can put GPS for navigating. And I've also got to do something with this seat because at the moment it is a no go for any sort of long distance. So there we are. Thanks ever so much for watching. I can't wait to get started on this. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>